particular elicitation technique that we will be talking about is interviews. There are different types of interviews. The structured interview is the first interview we'll talk about. This is where each interview is presented with exactly the same questions in the same order. Pros of this type of interview are that it's easier for the interview to stay on point. Context, context bias is minimized. This allows the results to be compared more reliably and important topics are not forgotten by the interviewer. Context bias is any variation that is due to the wording of questions or to the order in which the questions are given. This reduction in context bias is the main benefit of using purely structured interviews. Cons of using structured interviews is that there's less flexibility in the interview and it may seem scripted or dull for the interviewee. So we recommend that you use a structured interview format when interviewing large groups of people in order to minimize context bias and provide comparable data. In connection with structured interviews, I will also talk a little bit about how to plan an interview so you can ask the right questions and leave with all the information you need. Um, as stated here, a difficulty when preparing such elicitation interviews is to select the topics to discuss so as to avoid missing important information general issue is how to reveal important implicit information about requirements in interviews. Everyone comes to an interview with different assumptions and implicit information here refers to information that is not likely to come up unless specifically talked about. This figure shows some results from a study by Bernay, Faulkner, and Jureta about what types of information tend to be more implicit and what types tend to be more explicit. You can see here um, that explicit information includes items such as the purpose of the system and what it's going to do, uh, who is going to be using the system, place where the system will be used, etc. Uh, these explicit items will likely come up in the interview even if not specifically asked. However, the implicit items, such as the importance of relationships between you and your colleagues, uh, legal and financial status of your company, um, and repetitive trends in the company, are less likely to come up and less specifically asked about. It doesn't necessarily mean that one type of information is more important than another, but if implicit information is important to you and what you are needing out of the interview, it's important you plan to ask for it. Here are some example structured interview ex questions uh, from Bernay, Faulkner, and Jureta. And I adapted several of these for the interview I conducted. Because of the planned questions I used in both explicit and implicit areas, I was able to learn preferences from the stakeholder that I would not have thought to ask about initially and that might not have come up in an unstructured interview format. Some of these preferences include that the stakeholder will prefer three to ten close mentor-like connections with employers as opposed to 300 LinkedIn type connections um, that are a little bit more shallow. Now the stakeholder is also more likely to use the mobile application of our project because employers will be communicating during work hours and that is when the stakeholder has the most access to a phone over a computer. The stakeholder is also more interested in sharing personal accomplishment information as opposed to interests in the accomplishments of others. So they'd rather show their own projects that they have done instead of liking or sharing an article that someone else has written. Next, we'll be uh, discussing unstructured interviews. The unstructured interview compared to the structural interview is informal and relaxed. It is used when the interviewer desires to know the interests and intentions of their interviewee and is useful in learning the social constructs involved. This type of interview is best used at the beginning of the elicitation process because it opens the discussion to a very broad analysis of the subject and helps give a sense of the expectations involved in developing a project and product to the project solicitor.
As with all elicitation techniques, unstructured interviews have their own pros and cons. It is impossible to have a truly unstructured interview because a topic must be introduced from the beginning, but from there the discussion will flow as it will. This gives the interviewee the freedom to express interests and requirements in a low-stress environment. As for the interviewer, there are few constraints for guiding the discussion and can help the interviewee by informing them of potential improvements or risks. On the downside, important subjects can be entirely missed and the discussion can spiral down into unrelated topics. Unstructured interviews are best used near the beginning of the elicitation process because they foster increased communication as well as improve rapport between both parties, which is necessary throughout the continuation of a product's development. Many studies correspond to the vitalness that unstructured interviews have in creating an open and cooperative atmosphere and invite both the interviewer and interviewee to have a mutually respective line of open communication. Lastly, there is a semi-structured interview. This kind of interview contains elements from both a structured interview and an unstructured interview. If there is some structure, the interview has a general idea of the topics to go over, but if the discussion strays away from those topics and introduces new ideas, then it's okay. These types of interviews are very dependent on interaction between the interviewee and the interviewer. They are very con conversational in nature. Thoughts and ideas flow naturally. Open-ended questions are common in this type of interview because they give room for the conversation to explore new areas. This type of interview has several advantages. Firstly, it gives a general structure for the participants to follow along with while still allowing the discussion to explore other areas and ideas. It is really great for qualitative research. Couples are very commonly inter interviewed using this method because it produces more interesting, valuable data in comparison to other types of interviews. Semi-structured interviews definitely have their disadvantages, however. These types of interviews are insufficient when it comes to quantitative research. The answer they look for is why, rather than how much or how many. The data gathered using these methods is also very versatile, which can make it hard to draw comparisons between the different sets of data. Because of its nature, it can also be very difficult to analyze as well. My recommendation is to use this type of interviewing qualitative research. Remember, this type of interview finds out why rather than gathering data for quantities or numbers. Conducting research where a wide range of data results are acceptable is a great time to use this sort of interview. For interviews that are on a st time schedule, such as 10, 15 minutes, this may not be the best sort of interview to use because it is hard to predict how long or short these interviews will be. Some interviews will be very conversational and explore a range of different topics in addition to the structured ones, but some will just stick to the basic structure and not dive deeper into, di into additional topics. When I use this data in a real life interview, I, find s I found se several different uh, interesting outcomes from it. It gave rich data that represented the actual opinions of the interviewees. It also gave way for the interview to explore other areas, which would not have been explored if the interview had followed a structured format. It brought about new ideas, which I had no thought of before. The interviewees can be surprising. They can int introduce new ideas to the research, which hadn't have been thought of before. This would not be possible in a structured interview. All in all, this is a great form of interviewing that can gather very valuable data for the interviewers. Each of the three interview types, structured, unstructured, and semi-structured, have their individual advantages in the elicitation process, and each best serve in different circumstances. Structured interviews for use over large pools of interviewees where results will be stringently categorized. Unstructured interviews for building rapport and developing general design structures. 
semi-structured interviews for when a specific understanding must be achieved, but the format of achieving them is not specific.